Hello everybody, Dirk the Engineer here with my dad in the shop and we've been uh, messing about making a few jigs and some extra tools and stuff that we could use, uh, push sticks and such. Um, earlier today we made a gouge sharpening jig and obviously it's not glued together or anything like that right now but um, this uh, arm can be adjusted in angle pivoting about here and um, then you can put a nut and washer and wing nut in there and tighten that down and then you can put your lathe turning uh, gouges and uh, spindles through here and then you can use it on a slow speed grinder to uh, sharpen your your tools so um, get that glued up um, it is a nice friction fit. Uh, the only problem we had that we ran into is um, in here the uh, the uh, router bit of course is round and uh, it needs a square uh, corner uh, so we tried our best to get that flattened out with the file. I, I think my dad did this one. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> but anyway, um, anyway, maybe I did that one, but I'm gonna say it was him anyway. I did it. <laughs> anyway, then uh, we, uh, I had my first experience with double-sided machining. Um, found some examples on the web where you put a couple pins in, and basically you can flip it. And that way I can uh, profile the handle of these push sticks. Uh, I learned a few important lessons while doing this. Uh, number one, double check your machine paths to make sure that you're not actually going to hit your pin with a bit. That's what happens. But I've got to be say that I'm very surprised actually at how far this bit actually could cut the steel before it broke that pin was level with the surface and that's all that's left of it so it cut a good half inch of the steel away before uh, it failed uh, so yeah I mean <laughs> I bet it's possible to to mill steel with um, with this system but uh, I don't think I would recommend it I think you need to have coolant and all that kind of stuff and take much lighter passes than <laughs> Uh, and probably slower speeds than what I was using to cut the wood when it did this. So, uh, the other thing that I learned um, is double check your tab heights. There are actually supposed to be four tabs on this, and I make a, a rough cut through the material, and then I pass, do a final pass um, to just trim up and get everything nice and smooth. Well, it was supposed to pull up to a point two five inches so half the thickness of this and leave part of a tab here and it didn't um, so that didn't work out so well and the end result of it was that we wrecked a couple of spindles when they broke or wrecked a couple of um, push sticks when they broke free and obviously wandered into the bit and I'm just really glad that that didn't end up breaking another bit because it sure could have I think um, the other thing that I learned is uh, probably a better idea to get the corner really secure and leave enough space so that there's doesn't break out anything here um, on your edges. Um, I was a little bit too greedy with how close I got to my edges and um, of course that's not tied down anymore but the end result of that is that this thing can move on you without having it and I almost had another <laughs> disaster when that moved on me so anyway um, I'm really learning uh, so it's a steep learning curve with this stuff uh, I won't make those mistakes again I hope um, feel free to call me very dumb and stupid if I do because um, then I didn't learn my lesson the first time so uh, anyway, I uh, had fun. Um, it was a neat learning experience. Um,
think I know how to do double-sided machining now effectively, and uh, I'm very happy about that. So, um, Plus, I got a bunch of push sticks, so I don't have to worry about cutting my fingers off on the bandsaw. That's also a good thing. So, Till next time, Dirk the Engineer signing off. Um, remember to rate, like, and subscribe. All right, thanks. See ya.